In this video, let's begin a new chapter. This new chapter is on model risk management and in this opening video of this chapter, we'll take a look at what exactly is model risk and briefly speaking, how is model risk managed in practice? Okay, let's begin by defining what is a model in this context of model risk management. We define a model to be, let's say, a quantitative method, system or approach that takes in certain input data, processes this input data using a statistical, economic, financial or let's say mathematical theory, processes this input data by a suitable choice of a numerical or let's say closed form technique and by making a few simplifying assumptions. What comes out of the model is a set of quantitative estimates. Okay, so based on this definition of what a model is, you can very easily identify three different components of any given model. Number one, we have the information component. This is the component which delivers a set of simplifying assumptions and input data to the model. Number two and a very important component actually is the processing component. So this component is the one which does the number crunching and transforms inputs into the estimates which are churned out of the model. And then you have a third component, let's call it the reporting component. You can think of this component to be a layer that translates these estimates which came out of the processing component into business information which is useful for consumers of the model's output. Okay, so this is this additional layer which makes the model's output useful for let's say consumers such as traders, risk managers and even let's say senior management. Okay, now please note that in this definition of a model, we would also include those quantitative approaches whose inputs are, let's say, partially or wholly qualitative in nature or let's say inputs which are based on expert judgment. But what comes out of the model is indeed a quantitative output. So, for example, a credit scoring model would also be deemed as a model as per this definition. Even if the credit scoring model takes in inputs which are partially or wholly qualitative in nature. Okay, this is as far as definition of a model is concerned. So, if a model is, let's say, a method or an approach like this, why would a model expose us to any kind of risk. Now please understand that models they are essentially abstractions or let's say simplifying representations of real world phenomena and these real world behaviors and phenomena tend to be ultra complex in nature. Okay, so there is a very popular aphorism which states that all models are wrong it's just that a few models are helpful, okay? Because models are simplifying representations or let's say abstractions of the real world, models, they tend to focus attention on a few aspects, on a few relationships that you observe in reality and forego or let's say ignore other aspects of real world relationships. The aspects which a model focuses on and the aspects which the model forgoes or ignores depends entirely on the context. Okay, so therefore, because a model makes simplifying assumptions and because a model ignores a few aspects altogether, there is this risk if the model is capturing enough or not. Whatever we are ignoring, would it come back and haunt us or not? Okay, and therefore we have to kind of, you know, try and assess 
the quality of any given model. So the quality of any given model can be assessed along a number of dimensions, along a number of metrics, metrics such as precision. In a statistical models context, you can think of precision to be, let's say, standard error. Another metric is the model's accuracy. Again, for a statistical model, you can think of accuracy to be its biasedness. That means how close are the model's estimates to the true actual value, just in case you know that true actual value. Then other dimensions and metrics are discriminatory power. This would be important, let's say, for a credit risk model. I mean, for a credit scoring model. Can this model efficiently and effectively discriminate between defaulters and non-defaulters? Then other metrics are robustness, which essentially tells us how much can you stretch any given model before it eventually breaks. Then if you were to bring in the connotation of time, you can define this metric called stability. How stable is any given model over time when markets change, behavior of various investors and market participants change. And lastly, you can think of a metric such as reliability. If I were to use any given model repeatedly many number of times with very, sim very, very similar inputs, how far, how divergent are the model's outputs? Okay, how reliable the model is when you insert into the model inputs which are very close to each other okay, and repeatedly use the model. So this is about what exactly is a model and why would a model expose us to any kind of risk. Okay? Now let's do this. Let's formalize this concept that there is something called model risk which needs proper attention. Let's take a look at situations where model risk can indeed arise. To put it simply and in a single sentence, we can say that model risk arises when either the model throws back at you inaccurate outputs, that means inherently or let's say fundamentally speaking, the model has a problem in it. And number two, model risk can arise if the model in a sense is working fine but the model has been misapplied the use of the model is outside the context outside the original intention for which the model was built to begin with okay so let's take a look at this reason of model risk so a model it can have fundamental errors in it and therefore it churns out inaccurate outputs. Why would a model have fundamental errors? Well, first of all, you have to acknowledge that models tend to be ultra complex. Okay, models, they basically involve a combination of a chosen theory, a chosen sample with which the model works with, a chosen numerical technique, and in the end, the model is implemented and placed in a firm's risk management system, in the firm's information system and therefore any model is a part of a much bigger system actually. Okay. On top of that, when a model is implemented, there are a number of shortcuts, simplifications and approximations which are baked into the model's implementation. So if we are talking about something which is so ultra complex, there is this chance that something can go wrong. Either the input data might be stale or for that matter, there might be a programming or a computer bug in the processing component of any given model or for that matter, when the model integrates with the overall library, the overall risk system of the bank, that integration might have a problem. The model may be churning on out outputs which the system which is next in queue does not understand or let's say understands imperfectly. Okay, So because of all these reasons, the output of a model can be deemed as inaccurate and therefore result in model risk. Then 
let's talk about inappropriate usage of any given model we've already said this that models essentially are simplifications of reality okay they were created with a certain context with a certain end use in mind okay so it can happen that banks they either intentionally or inadvertently use the model outside the original situation the original context for which the model was created so a bank can intentionally use any given model for a new product or let's say for a new market for example there can be an interest rate model which was created and let's say calibrated with the japanese market in mind but then the bank uses the same model for let's say pricing and selling a product which is let's say in the us market okay so the bank has cross applied a model which was developed for the japanese market to the us market and that's like an inappropriate use of the model this is an intentional cross application many a times an inappropriate use of the model can happen inadvertently and that is because you ignored a few factors when the model was designed but then when the market conditions changed over time or let's say the customer behavior changed over time those factors which you had ignored to begin with now become suddenly important okay and therefore again we would call that situation as an inappropriate use of the model and therefore as a takeaway it's important that banks and the end users of any given model understand truly speaking the limitations of the model okay so this is about what is model risk and its situations where model risk can arise